Hi, today we're going to show you how to use a hemocytometer to count cells and share some tricks with you so you can do it right from the start. For the exercise you will need the hemocytometer, its cover slip, ethanol, your sample and a pipette with tips. A hemocytometer consists of a thick glass microscopy slide with two support structures in the middle. The area between those structures creates a well with a defined area. Additionally, lines are etched into the surface, which further subdivide the area. To use a hemocytometer, moisten the two support structures with ethanol. Push the cover slip over the two support structures and wait until the ethanol evaporates. Make sure you're using a proper hemocytometer cover slip. Regular microscopy cover slips are not suited and they will bend and distort the volume being analyzed. If the cover slip is placed correctly, ring-shaped interference patterns, called Newton rings, can be observed. A chamber of defined height is created between the cover slip resting on the support structure and the sample below. Load the chamber by pipetting your sample next to the cover slip. Capillary forces will suck the fluid into the chamber. Make sure not to overload it. Place the chamber under the microscope and choose a low magnification. Focus on the quadratic structure called counting grid and see if the cells are spread equally. Now choose a proper magnification and use phase contrast to see the counting grid in more detail. The grid allows you to count the amount of cells in a defined volume and therefore to determine the concentration of the cells in suspension. The grid consists of several large squares. The square in the middle is used for cell counting. Various types of hemocytometers exist. The most popular ones are Neubauer or Thoma chambers. In the Neubauer improved chamber, the large square consists of 25 group squares. In the older Neubauer chambers, the large square consists of only 16 group squares. Each of these group squares is further subdivided into 16 areas or mini squares. The mini squares are there to help you keep track of counted cells and to establish a counting order. Start in the upper left square and go to the right side. Then go one square down and go to the left side. Keep this order until you reach the mini square in the lower left corner. To prevent you from counting cells twice, counting rules have been defined. First, cells that lie between the third boundary lines of the group squares are not counted. Second, only cells that touch one of the two boundary lines, for example the upper and the left line, are counted. The cells that touch the two other boundary lines are not counted. To determine the amount of cells, five different group squares should be counted. In the Neubauer improved chamber, cells that lie in the five squares of the diagonal should be counted. In the Neubauer chambers, cells that lie in the four squares of the diagonal and in the square in the lower left corner should be counted. These five squares represent the minimum need for an accurate count. Yeast counting rules for budding cells. Daughter cells are only counted if their area is 50% or more of the mother cell. Stained yeast cell counting rules. When the sample is stained with methylene blue or methylene violet, these dyes permeate the cells. Living cells will actively remove the dye, while non-viable cells will simply absorb it. Stained cells are counted as dead. Budding cells are excluded from viability calculations. The basic formula to determine concentration is dividing the number of cells counted by the volume in which the cells were counted. To calculate the volume, take the edge length squared and multiply it by the chamber height. Also, consider how many squares were counted. Be mindful not to make a mistake when converting the units. One square millimeter corresponds to one microliter or a thousandth of a milliliter. In general, you want to convert the units, so the final concentration value is given as million cells per milliliter, as this is how concentration values are typically used for yeast counting. 
Your hemocytometer manual should include information about your exact edge length as well as the chamber height. Many manufacturers also include some sample calculations. Finally, make sure you also consider the dilution factor. If you diluted your sample before loading it, you have to correct by this factor. Take a representative sample of your yeast. Write everything down, including dilution steps. It is advisable to count no fewer than 10 and no more than 50 cells per square. Get a manual clicker to reduce the chance of miscounts. Get at least two if you're doing viability as well. Best practice is to count the grid on both sides of the hemocytometer. Both measurements should agree within 10%. There's quite a bit of subjectivity involved when it comes to counting cells. Human estimation of cell area is not great, and viability estimation also depends on a subjective judgment of color. Therefore, you should make sure it's always the same person doing the counts. This will greatly increase the reproducibility of the results. Make sure to create a standard document to write down your counts, dilutions and calculations. If you can, save the pictures from the microscope. Don't just write down the results or you'll never be able to track an error. When you're done with counting, remove the copper slip carefully from the side. Rinse the cover slip with water. And the slide. Dry both with a piece of paper. Pay attention not to dry the middle structure, since this can destroy the counting grid. Finally, when everything has dried, place the cover slip and the slide back in its box. Doesn't sound like you want to do this every day? Check out our resource section on automatic cell counters or visit our shop.